Hello everyone, this is Christian Maldex Town Interactive, and in this video we will use the Split Chunks plugin from Webpack to split out our code from code that's uh, third-party code, code that lives in the node modules. First thing that we'll do is we'll take everything in the node modules, we will put it in its own bundle, and just have our code in their own separate bundles, and then which is going to handle a majority of the cases that we want to, to deal with. But then uh, at the end here, we're also going to take it so that we can split out. So for example, here we'll have any code that's in the node modules folder, which is also in the React, in a folder named React underneath the node module. So React or React DOM, everything with the name React in it will go into its own bundle. Everything else, in this case, Lodash will go into a common bundle. And then of course, we'll have our own uh, bundles, in this case, two of them. Uh, but that's what we are going to take care of in, in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to um, download some packages from NPM. And as you can see on the, the screen here, the three packages basically types for um, React, React DOM, and Lodash, and the packages themselves. You can see here, at least as a time of writing the article, these were the package versions. The versions that I have just downloaded are slightly different, but in this case, it, it doesn't matter. We're just making bundles. It really doesn't matter at all. All right, so next, let's come back in here. So we're basically going to make a couple of bundles and we'll need some entry points for those bundles. And we'll come into our source folder here. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm going to call it nothing because I've already created it previously. So it's the pages folder. And so I'm gonna add a new file here. I'm gonna call it page-1, uh, what did I call it? Page.tsx. So uh React here, so import star from, oops, star. it's React from React, and then we'll import star as DOM from, perfect, and for page one here, we're going to use a tiny bit of Lodash. All right, and we'll just take filter. Perfect, and now we'll just do our React DOM uh, render. And it's not, <laughs> we'll never even fire at the browser, so we'll never even see this stuff, but have React code document dot D, oops. Perfect. All right. What are you complaining about? Ah. That was a few. Name it the right thing. And of course, in our uh, um, previously, I've used the uh, TypeScript just for TypeScript files. So we have a, J a JavaScript or a React TypeScript file. So we do have to go into TS config. I didn't even mention this in the article. This is not really a uh, anything to do with uh, bundles. So we'll uh, allow JSX in here, and we want also const example. We're just put in a toy thing using Lodash, so it doesn't get removed or any tree shaking or anything. Console.log filter. Examples. Get off of there. People's birthdays. Empty block empty. So we'll just return E 
like I said, this this literally does not matter. Simply just want something in here using some from Lodash. Save that. Page one's done. Just come down here. New file. We want a couple different bundles and see how things are different. So we'll have a page one and a page two. So page two here, just copy it in. So same deal, React, page two. This time though, uh, it won't include anything from Lodash. All right, so now we have to modify our um, webpack.config file. So we'll come in here. So the same file has been used for previous videos. We'll just comment out, oops, that's not what I wanted. Different shortcuts. So for the entry point, all we want to have are the two pages that we've just created. So we'll call this first page one. And it's located in the uh, source folder pages, page dash one, page dot tsx. So we'll have a page two and a page two. And one thing we do want to modify here as well is in the uh, rules, we also want to support TSX, maybe either TS or TSX. We'll go to the TypeScript loader. All right, so now we're ready to come back to our console here, which is MTM run build. It just kicks off, of course, Webpack. All right, so as expected now, we have completely, so what I did, uh, run, just to get numbers that are close to uh, what's on the article, I built it in production so it doesn't need minifying and whatnot. So we have the two packages now, uh, page one bundle, page two bundle, of course page one bundle, uh, bigger because of course it includes low dash, so we could, Look. That's G All right. So page one bundle, page two bundle over there. And of course, low dash is coming in. Gzipped at 24 kilobytes included. Well, I guess we have the whole thing. Yeah, 24 kilobytes in our page one bundle. Close that. Stop that. Back to here. So the important part is actually should have left that up. So the important part here, of course, is that there's React, React DOM, React DOM. There's React code in both bundles, and of course, it's not ideal, right? Uh, you know. This sort of defeats the purpose or defeats our ability to cache things. Most likely that we'll change our code, you know, within the, the we'll, we'll change what we write more often than we'll change third party code. So if we could separate the third party code out to its own bundle, it could be cached, cached longer than code that we write. So what we want to do, like I said, pull out the common stuff from both bundles. Back to the browser or back to our uh, Visual Studio code and the Webpack config. So what we're going to do is create another property to add to it, and in this case, it's going to be uh, optimization. Let's sort of keep it in alphabetical order. Optimization. So we have an object here. So inside that object, missing semicolons all over. Whatever. So split chunks, there's a property on there, split chunks. And then inside of that, we can have our cache groups. All right, and inside here, we're going to, so I think the split chunks can be used on its own, maybe with one uh, property, uh, one key set. But uh, you can then include the cache groups. Cache groups or uh, uh, override any settings, or I guess at least most of the settings that are in contained in the uh, split chunks object. 
So we have the cache groups, call them whatever you want. I'm not sure where that S came from, but we'll keep it there. It has no effect. What we need to do is in here, um, we're gonna need to tell Webpack what code this cache group should modify. And we do that, same as with the, you know, the rules in the module by adding a test. So we'll put a test in here. I think the test can be several different things. In this case, we'll use the a regular expression. And so I'm gonna say that if you come across any code that's contained within the node modules folder, folder so third party code, I want that to be split out into its own bundle. We're gonna give that bundle a name. I'm gonna call that common, could be vendor, whatever. And we'll put this chunks all. Have to read the documentation for Webpack. There's a couple of different settings. I think most commonly it's going to be all. So now we have this object and we need to add it. So optimization. Add it to our exports object here. So what we'll do is come back, clear this. Let's do npm just to see it visually. That part's somewhat easier to see here. So now we have a page one bundle and a page two bundle, very close in size. Of course, page one's slightly larger because it you know has that whole console statement for using the Lodash uh, filter. And then we have this bundle here, which contains 170, much larger than the other two. So if we look at the browser, then we see that we have a uh, uh, commons bundle. It's gonna be very hard to see. There's two purple dots going on, or purple uh, rectangles going on over here. These purple rectangles are the pages themselves. So the page one, page two, and then our common bundle. So 59 kilobytes gzipped, page one, 718 bytes, and page two, 612 bytes. So now we're doing exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and close that. And probably the vast majority of times that's sufficient to what I want to do. But there are other cases, uh, one in particular just as an aside, motivation wise, is that, so on the Exiton Interactive website, if you obviously check the articles and the videos, it's not very hard to guess that most of the stuff is written using Angular. But I do like React and I want to use something like Vue and, and I have a section on the page, it's about creating applications, sort of one-off applications. Um, so, for example, you know, as an example, I'll create this little password generator. Yeah, I'll accept that. Password generator, you know, to generate some random passwords, make it easier to use. Of course, this is written in Angular. I would like to be able to write these, uh, you know, applications in whatever I want, Vue, React, whatever. And I could do that now, except that Angular is served to every page in basically a common you know, third-party bundle. So what I want to do is to have Angular sort of uh, you know, split out of everything, split out of that common bundle, create its own. Oops, I need that in a second. So to see how we're gonna do that, let's go to our Webpack config and our cache groups. So all we're gonna do is modify this thing a little bit. So what we'll have is, in this case it's not Angular, it's gonna be React. So we'll have a React um, cache group. And inside of there, we'll have a test. And of course, a regular expression. And I am not a regular expression person. I basically find what I need and or something close and start modifying in a tester till it does what I want, right? So this is basically saying, um, Everything that lives in a node module that's in a subfolder, that subfolder contains the name React in some form, so it'll be React itself or React-DOM, uh, what have you. That will get a name, cleverly, of React. 
do our same chunks all here. All right, so now we have our uh, commons here in React. And I tried it a few different ways to see if it would how it would work. So maybe is this thing order dependent? So if you know if something passes on one, it will not go to the other. It seems to be that um, I don't know somehow it finds the most general one. So I tried running it here, and all I got was the common bundle. So what I'm going to do is to modify the test for the common bundle to be node modules that don't have React in the subfolder. And then that'll get included in the common. This could probably get a bit crazy doing this. Of course, you could use some helper function to generate these things, I think, but you know, whatever. So now we'll save that. Go back to our right console and we'll choose the same build. So we now have page one, page two, sizes unchanged, right? Nothing changed for them. Common bundle now has 75 kilobytes. React bundle has 102, which adds up to our 177. Look at this, React is the bigger part, so which is makes pretty good sense. So if we look, we'll now see that we have our React bundle, 33, 26, and little uh, teal, aqua, whatever these colors are. Page one and page two is at the bottom. Like I said, it's probably, uh, you know, vast majority of cases it would be sufficient to stop here, having just all third party code, all everything that's in the node modules folder extracted into a common bundle. But, you know, might come into the case where you want even more control and separate it into a, you know, some arbitrary bundles that you decide on. And uh, I think that that takes care of it for us in this video. Um, I think I've failed to mention it a few times here. It's in the little closing thing, but you know, if you have any comments, suggestions, any questions, um, please leave them in the comments uh, section below. Otherwise, I will talk to you later. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you and I will talk to you in the next video.